the judges should look at the law itself and say, don't care if everybody disagrees with me, it's unconstitutional. Or it's constitutional, depending on which way they fall on that particular decision. And as it says in the opinion given by Justice Alito, whether or we don't know what effect it's going to have on the country, and it doesn't matter. That's what a good judge looks like. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell that supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Another one that you're going to hear a lot is, well, the majority of Americans were against overturning Roe. So there is an element of truth to that. So I would say this one is correct, but only kind of. And the reason that I say kind of is because if you dig into the details, it's actually a lot less cut and dry. So for example, let's go ahead and look at this one. This is a poll from the Pew Research Center, and this is on opposition for overturning Roe v. Wade. And you can see there it goes all the way up to 70 in the year 2019 for people that were against Roe v. Wade being overturned. And 70% is a lot of people that were against Roe v. Wade being overturned. However, if you dig into the details, you understand that this is not really indicative of what people actually thought. And the reason that I say that is that same Pew study that found the numbers that I just showed you, the same organization, also found this. The majority of adults say that abortion should be legal in some cases, but illegal in other cases. In other words, they're pretty split. So you'll see that the, uh, the people that are on what we would call the extreme sides, in other words, illegal in all cases, no exception, that's only 8%. And then illegal in all cases, but there are some exceptions, that's 2 So you add that up to 10 and... Then you have the other, on the other side, the 19 and the 6, that's the people that believe it should be legal in all or at least most cases. So that leaves you with a little over 50% in the middle that say, well, it kind of depends. They think that it should be legal in some cases, illegal in other cases. Now, to be clear, this is one of those weird cases where I think the extremes are the only ones that make sense because it's either a life or it's not a life. And if it's not a life, who cares? And if it is a life, then it's of utmost importance. But I don't understand how you can say, well, I think it should be okay in some cases and not in others. That really doesn't really make any sense to me. Uh, I think that the uh, kill it at any time up to the point of birth is far more consistent than the, well, it depends in some cases, even though I think that's abysmal and horrible. But my point is, if you're looking at the public opinion, there are people that say it should be legal in some cases and illegal in others. So let's go ahead and look at the breakdown of that. So these are the people that oppose or agree with abortion at different times. Now that 8% and that 19% because they believe legal in all cases or illegal in all cases, those aren't going to move at all. So we're just looking at the people in the middle and where that movement is. So you'll notice up top, that's six weeks into pregnancy. So that's the heartbeat bills. There are heartbeat bills on the books that say after a heartbeat is detectable, you can't have an abortion. And most Americans do disagree with that. So unless you're in a ruby red state where there's a lot of conservatives, probably not going to get a heartbeat bill. But you look at that, it's still kind of divided down the middle. Like it's by no means a blowout for either side. Um, most people, in fact, almost 50% believe it should be legal in that uh, scenario, but you're still looking at about half and half at six weeks. Now, at 14 weeks, it's a little bit different. Like you have uh, a little bit more people that are either unsure or think that it should be illegal. And then most people believe that it should be illegal to have an abortion in the last bracket, which is 24 weeks. So I want to point something out to you real quickly. That's the Mississippi law right there. The 14 weeks only one more week than that would have been the 15-week ban, which is what we're talking about with the Mississippi law. So the other standard down here, 24 weeks, which is the first trimester, which is about where viability starts looking at least somewhat uh, in play, that's the Casey standard, which replaced the Roe standard of the trimester system. The viability standard in Casey 
usually kicks in not long after this point. So when we're looking at public opinion, we can get a pretty good idea of how people would actually vote or what people would actually feel like if we were judging not based on their feeling of whether they're pro-choice or pro-life, but are actually looking at the details themselves. I want to point this out. When you're talking about the Mississippi law, 55% are in favor of regulation of some kind at that point. And weirdly enough, even though this statistically is a little bit strange, 66%, even more, favor regulation, at least of some kind, at the Casey standard. Which tells you what? It tells you that this idea that the actual row standard, not saying overturning row, actually getting into the details and saying what row would mean when you ask them in detail, most Americans actually are in favor of not the Supreme Court, but the states having some level of regulation power in that time period. We're looking at 55 and 66 percent, depending on when that time period is. And so Democrats are convinced and they keep trying to tell people that the American people are on their side in this. But if you dig into the details, it actually shows the exact opposite. The majority of Americans, at least in effect and practicality, favor the overturning of Roe if they knew what that actually did mean. And even more importantly than this, and this was brought up in the opinion by Justice Alito, even more important than that, it doesn't matter. Because how popular a law or a Supreme Court precedence is, is immaterial to a judge. At least it's supposed to be. Now, in Robert's case, I don't think it actually is. I think that he puts his finger in the wind and decides which way it's blowing and tries to go in that direction. But that's not the way that it's actually supposed to be. Ideally, if you understand legal scholarship, what should happen is that a judge should look at that. He should see whether or not the law is constitutional or whether or not it should be legal. And that's the only thing that should matter to him. It wouldn't matter if 90% of people were against overturning Roe v. Wade. If it was 100% of people, the judges should look at the law itself and say, don't care if everybody disagrees with me, it's unconstitutional. Or it's constitutional, depending on which way they fall on that particular decision. And as it says in the opinion given by Justice Alito, whether or we don't know what effect it's going to have on the country, and it doesn't matter. That's what a good judge looks like. Somebody that doesn't care what everybody thinks of his opinion. He rules based on the evidence in front of him. That's why we have judges in the first place. There would be no point of having a judicial system or a Supreme Court if it was just whatever the majority thinks. Because that's what legislatures are for. Legislatures are supposed to figure out what their constituents want and use their own expertise and vote accordingly. The Supreme Court's not supposed to do that. That's why they have lifetime appointments, because they're not supposed to be swayed by the whims of politics. Now, you can agree or disagree with lifetime appointments if you want to, but whether you do or not, that's the reason they have them is because that's what a judge was always supposed to do. So, that being said, this decision, as I said before, was actually the moderate road. The judges could have, if they wanted to, got together and gone, you know what, we're all pro-life, why don't we just make abortion illegal? They didn't do that. And the reason they didn't do that is because they didn't see the constitutional authority to do so. They looked at the facts, they looked at the evidence and said, well, Roe's wrong, sorry. Whether you agree with it or not, that's what the Constitution says. There's no right to an abortion anywhere in the Constitution. You want to make a constitutional amendment for it? Fine, go nuts. But we, looking at the Constitution as it is now, and looking at the case that is presented before us, it's just not in there. That's the way the cookie crumbles. To convince you to like this video and subscribe to my channel, I'm about to do some political impersonations. First up, Bernie Sanders. It is immoral that in this country, the top 1% of YouTubers get all the likes and subscriptions. John Kerry. Please remember to ring the notification bell. President Joe Biden. 
And if you like the show, call the TV Guide and tell them. You know, the thing. Kamala Harris. Batman would want you to like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>